Hey there, Workflow folks. The team has been busy working to bring you some exciting new features. So now let's go through this latest update. So starting off is the cat pushing theme, which is a nice dark theme, slightly blue hues, and some pastel text colors and highlights. Very soft on the eyes. It's easy to look at for many hours. And so it's just a pleasant theme to try out if you like dark themes in general. Next up is the Firefox Clipper, which allows you to quickly select any text inside the Firefox browser and then hit a keyboard shortcut which is control shift Y or command shift Y on Mac, and then send whatever you've selected, whether that's text or a URL directly into your Workflowy inbox. So just another nice way to capture information and send it to Workflowy if you happen to use Firefox as your browser. We've also added a PDF reader. So if you drag and drop a PDF file into Workflowy, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna get a preview of the first page. And as always, you can just click download to download it as well. But now you can click on the preview to actually scroll through and browse the document. You can also copy the text from it. And then to close the preview, you simply hit escape on your keyboard or click outside of the preview or also click the X in the right-hand corner right up here. Next up is mobile multi-select, which allows you to long press any node inside of Workflow on the mobile app, and that enables multi-select mode. You can then tap on multiple of these nodes to select them and then move them around using little horizontal guides on the left-hand side. You can also use this mode to make multiple changes to the different nodes that you've selected. So for example, you can turn all the nodes you've selected into to do's, into quotes, bullets, and so on. So as you can see here, we're long pressing on an item, then selecting multiple of these items. Right at the very top, we see how many nodes we have selected. We can select all the nodes or cancel our multi-selection and then click and drag any of those nodes to move them. At the bottom of the screen, once we're in multi-select mode, we have a bunch of different options here. So we can change the format of the nodes, move them, duplicate them, mirror them, and so on. Next up, we have AI quick actions, which are available to pro subscribers who have enabled the AI features. Now, once you've done that, you'll be able to use some special slash commands that allow you to perform very common AI functions. So for example, to perform AI quick actions, you need to put your cursor on the item that contains the content you want to apply the quick action to, and then perform the slash command slash, AI, you'll see a couple of different ones here. For example, summarize, find tasks, draft an outline, fix grammar and spelling, and so on. In this case, I'm just gonna go for summarize. And what will happen is a pre-written prompt will be executed on this content, and then you can just either choose to accept or reject the content that the AI system generates. Related to quick eye actions is our next feature, which are called AI nodes. AI nodes work a little bit differently. AI quick actions have to be performed on the item you want to change or modify. AI nodes simply have to be on the same level as the content that you want to use as your context. So for example, here I've got multiple items that have content inside of them. And again, we just use the slash AI command, but this time I'll use the first one that shows up, which is AI node. It'll turn the current node into an AI node, which allows me to type the prompt or the instructions to the AI directly in line without having to go into some sort of a chat interface. So I could type something like the following. What do these historical figures have in common? And it'll use the context of all the items that are on the same level. So these items, they've got content inside and it'll use that as the context. So I just hit shift enter, or I could also click the little icon. And again, the AI will respond this time using the content around it. So anything on the same level as the AI node. And as with the quick actions, I can either accept to keep this content here or reject to rewrite my question or change my instructions. Next up, we have a Readwise integration. Readwise allows you to pull highlights, bookmarks, and clippings from things like your Kindle, Instapaper, Pocket, or iBooks into one centralized platform. And now with this new integration, you're able to pull them from Readwise directly into Workflowy. You can find instructions for setting this up at workflowy.com slash integrations slash Readwise, or just click the link in the description of this video. The team has also added a couple of very useful slash commands such as slash priority, what it does is it lets you choose whether new nodes go to the top or bottom of a list when you use the commands slash move to or slash mirror to. So whether they go to the bottom or the top is now up to you by going slash priority and then choosing top or bottom. In addition, we also have a new mirror to child slash command, which allows you to find a node and then it'll list all the children so you can select it. And now it will mirror to the child of that item. And last but not least, we also have a slash delete file, which allows you to remove an attachment from a node while still leaving the content of that node untouched. You just remove the file and you get to keep the written content. We've also added two new search operators, which allow you to search inside notes or inside backlinks. 
So that is in colon note colon, and then in quotation marks, the text that you're searching for in the note, or in colon backlink colon, and then in quotation marks, the text that you're looking for in a backlink. So just a couple more ways to find things inside of your account. Next up, we've released our rudimentary API, our very basic API with documentation available at workflow.com slash API dash reference. And it comes with basic functionality that you might need to connect whatever application you want with Workflow. We've also asked the community to please give us comments and feedback if they're trying to actually build something with the API so that our team can consider expanding it and making it even better for those purposes. As with anything else I've mentioned in the video, the links are going to be in the description to the documentation and also to the forum post where you can share your feedback with us if you're trying to build something with the API. Next up, for our Linux users, we have now .deb packages available specifically for Ubuntu users. And so this just makes it nicer to install and maintain workflow installations in a Ubuntu environment. And that's it. We hope you find at least a couple of these things exciting for whatever you're doing inside of Workflow. As always, be sure to leave us feedback in the comments below. We we'll always read your comments and take them very seriously when we're considering what to do next. And if there's something you'd like to see us add next, be sure to let us know. Until then, I will see you in the next one.